All right, good morning, everyone. It is 10 o'clock, so we're going to get started. Thank you all for joining us this morning. My name is Amy Reardon. I am one of the outreach coordinators with Delaware Commute Solutions, and this is our June info series um, with our guest speaker, Dark First State. So before we get started, please make sure that you stay muted throughout the presentation. We do have our chat, so if you have questions or comments, you may use the chat and we will have somebody monitoring that. And we will get started into the presentation. So we have DART today. I'm very happy to have them here today. And they will be reviewing the DART Transit and the DART Pass app, the DART Reimagine project, and Newark Connect. But before we get into DART's presentation, I just want to take a quick minute to review Delaware Commute Solutions and who we are. So Delaware Commute Solutions is a free commuter program through DART First State. We work with employers, employees, higher education institutes, and students to improve the air quality and reduce traffic congestion by championing clean commute options. And by doing this, we're assisting with transportation options on how to get to work and to school. And our clean commute options are going to be transit, so whether that's the DART bus or SEPTA, uh, carpooling, van pooling, biking or walking, compressed work weeks, or even working from home. So if you're doing any of these commutes or you need assistance with seeing which commute would work best for you, Delaware Commute Solutions can help with that. And we have added benefits to that you could take advantage of. This program is open to anyone who lives, works, or goes to school in Delaware. And we are dedicated to reducing the number of single occupancy vehicles on Delaware highways, which is going to decrease the congestion on the roadways, improve the air quality and then assist you with your transportation options. So that's just a quick review of who Delaware Commute Solutions is and we will have information at the end if you'd like to get some more information on how to join the program and utilize the benefits. So let's get into our DART presentation. So today we have Kathy Smith and Albert Loyola from DART and they will be providing us with some great information on DART. So I'm going to turn it over to Kathy. I believe you are taking the mm -hmm. first section with DART Reimagined. I am. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kathy Smith and I'm the planning manager for Delaware Transit Corporation. Um, I apologize, my, fr my throat is a little froggy. We have the uh, rain and the allergy season here, so um, I'll try to speak a little slower. Um, I am the project manager for DART Reimagine, and it is an exciting uh, time to be part of this DART Reimagine. As you know, our fixed route uh, ridership suffered greatly as all transit agencies experienced a ridership decline during the pandemic. We, however, are rebounding. Um, we're about 75 to 80% back what our fixed route services was prior to the pandemic in 2019. However, um, a lot of the dynamic of the work from home and the remote work really changed the commute patterns and we essentially lost our commuter um, ridership, as you may well be aware as part of Delaware Commute Solutions. And our rail ridership has only rebounded anywhere from 45 to 50 percent of what it was pre-pandemic uh, numbers. So what we decided to do is things have changed dramatically. So it's time to take inventory and kind of do a study and figure out where our riders are, how they're currently using the system, where they need access now and where they need to go in the future. So we are doing a year long statewide transit study and we're evaluating the current DART uh, first state transit system. So we're focused on improving transportation across the entire state in each of the counties. Next slide, please. So we started off right now 
as you see, the center identify is where we are in the study process right now. We started off evaluating, which was kind of the textbook exercise, you know, looking at our peers, looking at the key performance indicators, looking at, you know, the number of riders, the ridership, the riders per hour, the riders per mile, and doing a really deep quantitative dive on the performance metrics and seeing where our systems are performing, where they're performing well, where they um, don't have the ridership, um, where you know resources may be shifted around. So we got a really good set the stage template of where we are. So we're moving into, and as part of that, we kicked off a digital survey. And not only digital, we made it available um, as project manager. We have a website that's dedicated to the study. I highly encourage you to, as you can see, the name behind me, DART Reimagined on my marquee. Um, it's www.dartreimagined.com. And we put it out there to get the customer feedback as we're going through and evaluating the services. So it kind of calibrates, you know, what we're seeing, you know, making those adjustments. You can only do so much quote unquote textbook exercise. We really need you, our customers, and we need to hear um, where the connections and what's happening out on the bus and on the road. Um, so, We've done that. The study, we just closed that out last Thursday, the 15th. However, we are still collecting. Um, we're still in that data collection phase. So even though the survey has ended June the 15th, we're still interested in data collection and learning where people need to go you know, where they're starting their trip, where they're ending their trip, where they work, what time do they work, what are the shift times, is it weekday, is it weekend? So we're still throughout the summer, we're still collecting that. Instead of the survey, we ask folks to submit ideas into the project website at info at dartreimagine.com. So we are into the identifying, and we are looking at, we're kind of meshing what we are hearing from the survey. And we had 2,408 surveys and uh, just a trickle of those were in Spanish, um, but we also made those available in hard copies for some of the senior centers um, and some of the disadvantaged populations in Sussex County. So we also included those hard copy survey responses as well. Uh, next study, or I'm sorry, next study. Next slide, please. So this gives you a snapshot of our service development process. As we're going along and we're collecting data, we're, we're getting input, um, not only from the public and the customers and the existing transit riders and um, partners and key stakeholders such as yourselves, um, but we're looking at that performance metric, um, aspect and, and setting goals and some guiding principles and developing standards for some of these concepts. Right now we're in the summer uh, phase where we're doing summer outreach and we're already starting to develop some of those initial draft network scenarios, you know, where we're looking at reallocating um, some resources. Some routes may be reallocated, eliminated, or some may have increased frequencies, some may have a longer span of service, or there might be some service coverage to some new areas. So as we're going about and we're doing this, in the fall, we will have a draft network and it will have a comprehensive service plan, looking at the service types, the alignments, the headways, the spans, and the resources. Next slide, please. So as we go about this process and we're looking at the quantitative and the qualitative, we have to be mindful of a lot of the financial resources and consider those key choices and those trade-offs. So these are some of the things that we kept 
those guiding principles that we really, as we're going through this process, we're keeping up there and, and being mindful of, you know, access to jobs and services, the geographic coverage and the equity, you know, where are those vulnerable populations, the lower income, the minority, the seniors, you know, the disabled community, making sure they have mobility and they can get to the services and the destinations that they need. Looking at the service quality and availability and the cost effectiveness, effectiveness and efficiency, and that really ties into not only fixed route, but maybe there's a different type of service delivery option. And the second part of the presentation, I'll go into a little bit more depth, but one of those types of service delivery options is called micro transit, which is, is basically like public, a public transit Uber, an on-demand type of service. And of course, looking at where we need to put our supply of transit services, where is that demand? Where can we find those critical masses to have the best ridership productivity? Next slide, please. So as we're going along and we're interviewing key stakeholders and from the results that we've had, we're still tallying those results um, of the survey since it just ended last week. There's some initial strategic focus areas that really come to play. And this is, you know, this is what our ridership is telling us. Um, we really need to focus on reliability and higher frequency, and we're looking at establishing that core network and making improvements there. We need to promote that system that's easy to use, thinking about route to route transfers or even at the bus stop level where people need to access, have an accessible pathway to go to the nearest bus stop. Uh, the travel times and a system that's easy to na navigate. The other one is the service quality, providing new types of service delivery models. And again, having a equitable service and options for uh, some of those special populations that um, we, we definitely need to provide some vital mobility for that. Now those are, I have five up here. Those are the three core with the guiding principles. The two on the bottom, prioritizing safe access and enhancing the user experience with signage, consistency, the onboard experience, um, Wi-Fi, and of course safety on board and off and having that accessible um, ADA, you know, Americans with disability, there are some um, you know, a, a flat surface pad that's a certain length um, for if there's a wheelchair deployment. Those are going to be, those two at the bottom are some of the strategic focus areas that we need to have throughout any of our strategic areas where we're making these improvements. So those are included in, in all of, you know, where we're establishing our core network where we're making changes to routes and the system network design and where we're changing the different service delivery models. And also what's um, becoming even more prominent is the need for transit supportive policies. And this speaks to the land use, um, the road network, the road geometry. A transit system is only, I always like to say, it's only gonna be as good as the street network design is, um, thinking about connectivity and having efficient travel from one area to another. Next slide, please. So the next steps, um, as I mentioned before, we're into summer outreach and engagement activities. Um, we're out and about, we're at community events and festivals, and we're meeting with stakeholders. We've done some focused interviews with our fixed route operators. Um, this is an example of a, a engagement and outreach activity here, being here this morning and presenting to you. So I welcome that opportunity. Um, as part of this, we do have an executive advisory team 
and they are looking more at what we come up in those strategic focus areas and where we're going to make those adjustments, looking at the policy end of it and looking at the bigger uh, picture for whatever that system network design is. We also have technical advisory committees. We have one in each county in Delaware, and we have one specifically for Wilmington. Um, we've met the executive advisory team. We've met three times, and the technical advisory team we've met twice. Um, we have shared our very draft concept system network with them just last week and we gave them something to digest as we're still out there gathering intel and information. We're going to bring those groups back together in August and we're going to, you know, continue with the scenario and the trade-offs and looking at what that system network design is. That final recommendation, it's still going to be draft because we need to present that to the community and have the final say through community workshops. They will be happening in the month of September. Um, I encourage you to, we don't have the date set for those yet, but there will be one in each county and one in Wilmington. Please, I, you know, share um, this information when it comes across. I, I know that Amy and Kathleen are, are wonderful to support DART and to share information about meetings and workshops. So I'm sure you will get that as part of your, um, as part of being, being part of Delaware Commute Solutions. And then we will bring all of those groups together and have one statewide virtual meeting, probably the end of September in the fall. So next slide, please. So that is a quick summary of um, DART Reimagined. And here's my information here. And I encourage you to think about if I could give you a homework assignment, if I may. If you know of your workers or yourselves or friends or transit riders, if you, you know of areas where they're trying to um, have service, you know, later at night in certain areas. Um, the more specific you are, the greater um, we can consider that information um, and let us know if, if you have work shifts that, you know, people are having trouble, if you're having trouble getting employees because they need access, they need transportation. Please use the uh, info at dartreimagine.com and give us that information. Okay, so next we're going to go into, this is our Dart Connect Newark. Next slide, please. So Dart Connect, as I had mentioned before, some of the performance metrics and looking at this comprehensive view of where the demand and the supply is, looking at the land use, the road geometry, Sometimes it's really difficult to serve our riders and our communities with the large 40 foot regular fixed route transit buses. So we have uh, branched off and also looking at um, sometimes it's more economical to provide uh, not have out the regular fixed route service and it's easier at you know later night or really early in the morning or in royal populations to have a different type of service delivery. So we piloted our first on-demand microtransit service in Georgetown and Millsburg and that was really a, a connection of the first and the last mile in a royal area where you don't have high concentrations of where people pick up the bus, the origin, and where they're getting off of the bus, the destination. So we piloted this and it, it has proved successful. Um, the pilot was with a grant, um, which has since cl closed and completed. And we have decided to have this one of our 
repertoires of our service delivery options. So microtransit, if you are familiar with Uber or Lyft, it's similar to that. However, it's not a one-to-one -one ride. You will be on a smaller type of vehicle. Um, it could be a van or it could be a cutaway size, but you will be sharing that rides with other riders. It really helps to improve mobility and connectivity, and it provides access to those people who need a transit trip. Um, it is a same day on demand ride. We have a special app called Dart Connect, and it's available. You would book your ride through the app, or for those who don't have a smartphone or have access to a smartphone, they can call a phone number and it's similar to the paratransit. They would call a reservationist and they would put that trip in Dart Connect for them. Um, there's no ride hailing with this service. It is a defined service area. Um, typically, they're five to seven miles and some of the more rural areas where you don't have the road geometry, it might expand up to you know 10 to 15 miles. But we try to recognize the economies of scale and have a boundary you know, that is adequate with the resources that we have. It's flexible, it's affordable and convenient. And it's very important to note that it does not replace DART paratransit. Next slide, please. So our third microtransit pilot, or not pilot, our actual first that's not a pilot that we're going to be implementing is in the city of Newark. Um, currently, the city of Newark historically for 30 years has had a loop route um, that's about 75, I think it's like an hour and 10 minutes for one loop. So it's really not efficient, depending on where you pick up the route. It may be a fast trip or when you're getting off, it would be a very long trip. Um, the, the service is just not that productive. It's about 15 people a day. So it's a lot of resource out there that's not providing a lot of of benefit to the riders. So we um, have been partnering with the city of Newark and we've decided that this would be a better service delivery option. So the service will operate on weekdays from six to eight. It will be a little bit longer of a service span than is currently offered with the Unicity service. It is an on-demand, it's not reliant on a fixed route schedule. Um, it will enable faster travel times to and from destinations. It will provide some service um, to underserved areas in the city. And it will be, we've, we really believe it will be improved service to community members that need increased mobility. Next slide, please. So this gives you a, a map snapshot of the area. This is the boundary um, that the Newark Dark Connect will um, be servicing in this area. It covers the city of Newark, some surrounding neighborhoods. Um, the pickup and drop off points could be at Dart or some of the, the now it's Unicity bus stops or Cecil Transit bus stops. Um, it also will have pickup locations that will best serve the rider for where their actual geographic location is. It could be, um, you know, outside of their building, like at the main towers or something. But it's important, it's not door to door, it's going to be curb to curb. And unlike paratransit, it doesn't have operator assistance. Next slide, please. So the implementation um, is we had to present to the New York City Council and they had overwhelming support for it. We're looking at implementing this with two vehicles, um, two smaller vehicles with one spare on August 7th, 2023. Unicity is, is free, um, but it's, it's still, even though it's free, it's not productive, but this will be one of our repertoire services and we will, since it's being operated by DART, it, we will charge a fare. It will be a $2, a one-way trip. And if you um, 
our senior, it, it's you are eligible for the reduced fare. It would be 80 cents a trip. Right now, we're working with the city on collaborating um, with a marketing campaign, having some bus wraps and some marketing outreach um, and education. You know, we plan on meeting with some of the concentration of populations, particularly the seniors, um, and helping them to download the Dart Connect app or making sure that they have the phone number to call and to make the reservation. Unicity service will continue to operate concurrently um, through September 30th, and then after September 30th, that service will be eliminated. Next slide, please. And this is, um, Albert, I didn't know if you wanted to take this one, um, but this is to show our real-time transit info on DART's app. Sure. Um, thanks for doing the first two uh, presentations. Uh, very good review. But I mean, we do have our our transit apps that are all, that are readily available on either Google Play or uh, or the App Store, Apple App Store, and it's just another way of you know. It, it, I, I guess the, the the theme that we're trying to do here is how to make using our transit uh, services easier for everyone. Um, and the Dart app, it just gives you everything you need to know real time about what's going on with our bus routes. Um, you tap on it, you can go, it, it, it's, uh, it, it's geocoded, so you can, it, it, will, it will, if you allow your location on your devices to be on, um, it will tell you where you are, the nearest bus stops, and also um, at what time the uh, the bus will be at that particular stop. Um, I used it yesterday, I should tell you the truth, and um, and there was you know there's been a lot of uh, events here in the city that 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 are playing uh, a little bit of some adventures with our transit system. So it's it's, it's great information, um, and it's readily available, and it's twenty four seven. So um, next slide is our, what we have is our Dart Pass, which is a, a, a different app, but it's again, with the same goal in mind of trying to get folks to use our system in an easier way. You can download and you can um, have your fares in your phone or in your device. And then we have validators in all of our, all of our vehicles and you tap your phone and there and there you go you can have all our instruments our, our fair instruments are available through the app um and it just makes it uh it just makes it that much easier for uh for you to get on you don't have to worry about carrying cash or uh having to play with our with our fare box you just board the bus tap and you're ready to go Well, I want to thank you both uh, Kathy and Albert for joining us today and providing this great information. I know we did have a couple questions in the chat. I believed um, Albert and Kathy, you did answer them by either responding in the chat and Kathy as you were, were going through the presentation. But if you do have any other questions, please feel free. We have about um, a minute left. Go ahead and add them in, in the chat. If you have questions afterwards, you can always reach out to Delaware Commute Solutions and we can uh, provide those questions to both Kathy and Albert and get a response back to you. Um, and just to kind of wrap things up, um, one question I do have, Kathy and Albert. Somebody's asking, does the Dark Connect in Newark have a bike rack on front? Yes, it will. They will. So you have a yes. multimodal commute yes. there. So, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then just again to wrap things up, I see there's there may be another question pop, popping up. Um, the recording will we're just going to make sure there's no uh, back end noise, and we will get that hopefully out to you by the end of the week. So once we have the recording, 
we will send it out to all those who joined us and it will also be posted on our website as well. But we're going to send out a thank you note. It will have the recording of the presentation. It'll have information for DART and information for Delaware Commute Solutions. I encourage you to register with Delaware Commute Solutions. You can either go right to our website, DelawareCommuteSolutions.org. You can download our app as well. You see what uh, it looks like DECS and the photo that will pop up with that. If you're riding transit, biking, walking, carpooling, working from home, please register for the program so that you can utilize the benefits of Delaware Commute Solutions. And next slide, we'll have our information. So we have our website, our email, our phone number. If you have questions, need additional information, please feel free to reach out. We will have the information for the um, DART Reimagine if you would like to provide some feedback to DART with that. We will include that in the thank you note as well. And I just want to do another quick check, make sure all questions have been answered and I believe they have. But again, if you do have questions, um, feel free to reach out after the presentation and we will get back to you. Thank you again, Kathy and Albert. We really appreciate it on behalf of the Delaware Community Solutions team. And, and check out the website, please, the www.dartreimagine. There's some really good information, the state of system report and much more information that I could provide for you today. But I really, um, this is about you, our Delawareans, and, and getting people to where they need to go. So please let us know what your needs are, your transit needs are. And we will make sure that website is included in the follow-up note as well. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining. Have a fabulous Wednesday and be on the lookout for more information um, about DART Reimagined, uh, DART Connect down in Newark, and we'll also make sure once we have those dates in September that we will share them with the Delaware Commute Solutions um, audience. Thank you again so much. Have a wonderful day. Okay, thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you.